Hello, this is a second video in a small series on uh, characteristic functions, moment generating functions, and factorial generating functions. I'm trying to get out uh, some of the background before I start in on that so it'll flow easier and quicker. I can just revert to these uh, um, videos. Here we're going to look at the derivatives of, a, of the characteristic function and show that they are bounded. And I'm going to give a few background information before we jump into that. And the first one is, if we assume that the absolute value of the kth moment is finite, then that implies that the kth moment is finite. And a simple proof is, uh, the absolute value of the kth moment is this. And then if you take the uh, absolute value of x, then this is bigger than this because these are always positive, where this can be positive or negative. And then, well, this is just the absolute, the expected value, the absolute value raised to the k, which is, we already said, was finite. So if this is true, then it implies that. Uh, next is, if we have the kth moment, absolute value of the kth moment, and, and that's a a number bigger than say m so all integers are all numbers less than k it implies that these are also finite so a lot of times in proofs you may see like the third moment is finite or the fourth moment or the second moment and that implies that the lower moments are also finite so here's a quick little proof of that um, and this is this is a very simple little proof, and there's a I'm going to say a more elegant proof using Jensen's inequality, which I almost put down because it's kind of interesting. But this is shorter, so I used it. Um, so if k is less than m, and then for all x, um, we take you know the absolute value of x raised to the m, that's you know positive, and um, this is always less than one or the maximum of absolute value of x raised to the k, where k is a bigger number than m. Well, and this is always bigger than one plus this. So now if we take the expected value, well, we know the expected value of this is finite, right? So going backwards, this expected value of this, expected value of this is one plus expected value of that, and this is finite, and then it's less than this. So if this is less than something finite, this has to be finite. So the modulus, or often called the absolute value of a complex number, is this. It's defined if we have an absolute number, or a complex number a plus bi, the absolute value of z is um, can be represented like this. But you take the the coefficients and square them and take the square root. So it's the uh, sort of Euclidean distance from the origin. Um, so let's go through an example. If z is just i, so the absolute value of i or the modulus of i. Um, the real component is 0, and the, there's a coefficient of 1, so this uh, square root of 1, which is 1. If we have this, where z is, say, co cosine of x plus i times sine of x, that's our complex number, then the modulus of z is cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1, the square root of 1 is 1. So, and then there's another little property, which I'm not going to prove, but I think it's pretty straightforward, is if you take the absolute value of a product, that's equal to the product of the absolute values. So now let's let's jump into proving that the derivatives of a um, the moment the characteristic function is finite. So here, if we this is a kind of like Euler's formula. And we're not going to prove it. There's lots of videos. I think maybe the easiest way to, to show this is using the Taylor expansion of this. And then using the properties of I to show that this is true. But 
If we look at the uh, characteristic function, which is defined as the expected value of e to the i t x, so we look at the absolute value, then that is less than the absolute value of the inside. And this is actually the first video in this little uh, chain of videos I'm doing where they, we look at the absolute value of the uh, the expected value. And so I, we, we proved this step. Well, then if we take the absolute value of this, which is this, so cosine squared plus sine squared, that's 1. So this is expected value of 1, which is 1. And so the characteristic function is bounded. So now let's look at the first derivative of the characteristic function, which is this. Now, can we pass this um, differentiation into the integral sign or the expectation sign? And the answer is yes, this is a bounded function. We just showed it. Okay, so we can pass that in and we get this. And then the derivative of this is, is this. And then again, the, we've taken the absolute value of this expectation. It's, that's less than the expectation of the absolute value. But then this is the product of numbers. So we can take the absolute value of each of those or the modulus of each of those. This is 1, and this is 1, so we're just left with the expected value of x, which is finite. So now, oh, actually, I probably should say that we're assuming that the absolute, the expected value, the absolute value of x raised to the k is finite. So this, we're assuming this is true. So that means that the you know the first moment is is finite because we assume that that raised to the k is finite. So now let's look at the second derivative of this um, of the moment generating function. But that's really the derivative of the derivative, and that we just showed that the derivative is this, right? And also we just showed that this is finite. This is finite, so we can pass that in to this expectation, and we get this. And then the derivative of this is we get, um, oh, that should be i squared. And um, then that's less than or equal to the expected value of the absolute value. And then you break those up into three products of the modulus of each of those and you can show that it's the expected value of the absolute value of x squared which is finite because we're assuming that the kth one is finite so now I'm going to go dot 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 and similarly you can show that the kth derivative of this is less than or equal to this which is finite and so um, the kth derivative of the moment generating function is is finite, assuming that the kth moment is finite. Okay, that's all I have for today, and we're going to make use of these these properties in the upcoming videos. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.